Hey guys, Phil and Florence. What we have for you today is another college football game day cook. Uh, it's not a small cook. It's actually uh, something my son wanted. He, he's always wanting to do ribs. So one thing we're going to do a little different today is I'm not going to use a rub on the ribs. I'm just going to salt and pepper them and baste them or spritz them with apple cider vinegar. At the end of the cook, when, when they just about get done, and I'll probably wrap them, but I'll do the saucing, and I think I'm going to use the uh, tiger sauce and red pepper jelly with uh, some tailgater hater sauce, some that I still have on hand that I need to use. But I'm not going to put a rub on the ribs, just salt and pepper, and at the end we'll sauce them. We'll see how they turn out. I want the meat flavor to come through. Sometimes if you use a lot of rub, uh, it overpowers, the, to me, it can overpower the flavor of the meat and you'll taste a lot of other flavors, but um, I, this is just something I'm trying. I'll probably go back to using rubs the next time, but uh, I wanted to give this a shot. So you stand by. Next thing I'm going to do, and by the way, I have my son Jared with me. He's, I'm showing him how, uh, what the process is of cooking ribs, so he'll know how to do it. So the next thing we're going to do is take this membrane off. And you can start out in the, big, in the middle of this thing. You don't have to, you don't have to go it, to the end. Put your thumb down under your hand, hold it, and just work back this way, and then come back the other way. The more you do it, you know, we don't do ribs that much, but just like anything else, the more you do it, the easier it gets. Okay, we're gonna put a little salt. I didn't even use any mustard. This is totally different, folks. Totally different. And we're gonna use the, uh, I don't have a pit barrel cooker, but I have the next best thing. I have a Weber Smoky Mountain with the expandable uh, hanging racks. So I'll be able to actually do the same, pretty much the same thing. turn this Weber Smoky Mountain into a pit barrel cooker. And so I'm gonna put the small end at the top. I don't have to worry about that pulling loose. Okay. Two two down, one to go. We're ready to go. See you there. Okay folks, the charcoal's hot and we gonna uh, set up the grill. I want to show you my setup. Weber Smoky Mountain and we're going we don't have a pit barrel cooker so we're gonna go with the expansion bracket you know it fits right on these brackets here and it expands the height of the grill so we're gonna take these rods these are really don't need but one of them because all three racks can go on one rib on one rod right in the middle and it'll handle all three racks. The next thing I want to do is connect the thermal works. So I'm going to take this clamp. You see this is a handy dandy clamp. You've seen it before. Put it over here on this little, that's the garage door handle. I mounted to the side. Got a little piece section of pipe. That's an old vacuum cleaner pipe that I cut and put on the end of this bolt and it's just right for this to fit on. So that's what I do with that. Then I take the works, the thermal works, and it clamps right there. It keeps it away from hot and it points it towards me when I walk up to it. I can see what it's reading. Because I do have the tool that I ordered the hooks and the tool from Pit Barrel Cooker.
set up. So there we have it. Weber Smoky Mountain expanded. Weber expansion racks. Uh, hooks from TPC. Thermal Works. I want to show you this little gadget. This is another Thermal Works timer. You can have four different cooks going on at the same time. Matter of fact, we're going to start. You can time up or time down. Um, down up. And you just hit start. Now, if I had some more meat or another cooker going, I can hit start for that one. If it's 10 minutes from now, 30 minutes from now. Or I can count down if I wanted to count down from two hours. And there's a timer bell that goes off. I like this little gadget. It was like $49.95. So we'll let that sit there and count for us. Okay, we're going to close this up and let these start cooking. And we'll be back. Close it nice. We'll be back in about, I don't know, an hour to spritz them with some apple cider vinegar. Okay, it's been an hour and 41 minutes. Just opening up to take a look. We've been running about 240 to 250. Remember, I didn't do any rub. It's just salt and pepper. All right, put them back to sleep. Let the pimp raise back up, and we'll check back with you in a little while. Okay, it's time to wrap. Tool and put it under that hook and lift up. Concentrate. Concentrate so you won't drop it. Alright. Looks a little different, doesn't it? I'm going to take all of them up because we're going back with the. Uh, we're going to go back down with the rack. Hanging rack did its job. Coming out. What we're going to do is lay down, you know the deal, some brown sugar. Put down some honey, down a little bit of tiger sauce, and some red pepper jelly. Got them back on as you can see wrapped and we're gonna leave them on for an hour and then we're gonna come back unwrap and sauce all right it's time to sauce the meat this sauce is that tailgater hater sauce but I've doctored it up some I put some more brown sugar and honey and some more of that I think what I'm going to have to do is take that off. That is hot, boys. That is hot, boys and girls. What I'm going to do is took the midsection off, took the grate off. I could have uh, put these hot coals up high, but I don't need but a few minutes of it, so. I'm gonna sear them and do the smoky goodness three flip magic move. Y'all know what that is? Go to smoky goodness 2.0 and watch Dan, Mr. Smoky Goodness guy, do the three flipper. That puts a nice sear on the ribs. All right, you ready? Just get them all on there. 
let that charcoal sear them up real good. I guess I got hot enough coals. They're not real hot, but they should be hot enough to do what I want to do. All right, put a little more sauce. Yeah, my fire's waking up. It's time to turn them. I smell something. I hope they're not burning. Yeah, I smell it. It's getting pretty hot. I think I'm gonna move this one over. Yeah, I probably left it on a little too long. Dead gum. Had some sauce in the pan, may as well use it. Dang, sorry tongs, get you some good tongs. I'm leaving them on there too long. But they'll be good. They will be good. They got a pretty, pretty ma reddish mahogany color. One more time. I'm all right so far. I don't want to get any more than that. We got the ribs done. Let's uncover them. See what they look like. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna pick out. I'll just pick this one out. Oh, uh, I tell you, you got to really be fast on that three flipper. If you stand there and look at it too long, you're gonna get a little more uh, seared than you bargained for. What we did was did the pit barrel cooker tight cook on the Weber Smoky Mountain, like I said in the beginning. We used a hanging rack, expandable hanging rack, and we did, we cooked them for like two hours, direct pit, at about 250. We'll just act, say we averaged around 250. And so then I wrapped them for an hour, and then I un unwrapped them and sauced them down and after we sauced them, we put them over direct flame. And you'll see that in the video. And, and then we just seared them real good, flipped them twice. Dan, I didn't make it to the third time because I was, they had already gotten a little too much sear, but they're gonna be good, I know. So let's open one up and see what she looks like. I didn't use any rub on these. And let me flip these back over to show the pretty side. Okay, got a good, good smoke uh, ring showing. Smoke ring. All right, it's got a pretty color. Now we're going to do the taste test, and this was what I was wanting to try out without rub, just salt and pepper in the beginning, and then I had the sauce, and of course the brown sugar, um, the butter, margarine, squeezed margarine, and the honey. And uh, then I had a good sauce. All right, let's try it. Very tender, very tender. Very good, very good taste, delicious. Matter of fact, let me wash my hands. I might get my son. He helped me all day. He's been watching and participating in this. He's got the camera. I'm going to let him take a taste. All right, the old Clemson fan. I won't hold that against him. It's tender enough. How about the flavor and the taste? Compared to some you've had before. Speak. <laughs> well, he's too busy eating, so we'll let him eat, and I'll wrap this up. Okay, that about does it. Um, we did some ribs today for game day football, college football, and uh, my son wanted ribs, so we did ribs. Next week, it might be something a little more lightweight, like burgers and dogs or something. If you like what I'm doing, you like 
watching these videos and like what I'm bringing to you, uh, hit uh, like. I'd appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe and make comments, good or bad. I can take it. So until next time, Phil and Florence, you come back. Now that is the homemade red hash that I'm talking about. It's not liver. It's all Boston butt with other ingredients. But you talking about good, that is good on rice. And we eat that with barbecue ribs or barbecue pork. Oh, my daughter's grapevine yielded some nice grapes. Uh, we got two different varieties. We uh, crushed the juice out of the hulls, made some grape juice about that. You see that grape juice? Yeah. Got a nice conical fast fermenter right here. It holds 7.8 gallons. And a little bit of leftover standing by over here. It's just grape juice.